Hello. Uh, this might actually end up being a new playlist. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. But this is the first video in what hopefully at some point will be many videos about WebGL in P5.js. So first of all, this video, this first video, I just want to talk about what WebGL is, how that relates to P5.js, uh, how that relates to maybe other JavaScript libraries like you might have heard of like 3.js, and um, um, kind of like how do you just get your sketch, basic sketch set up to use WebGL. Okay, so first of all, where do I go for this? I guess I'm just talking. What is, let, let, me, let me go to the whiteboard. That's going to help me organize my thoughts. There is something called WebGL. WebGL, web, obviously like the World Wide Web. GL stands for Graphics Library. Now this term comes from another term you might have heard called OpenGL. And OpenGL is an open graphics library. This is a standard. This is a library for doing computer graphics that exists across many different languages and environments and contexts. One of the key things about OpenGL is the fact that it is uh, hardware accelerated. Meaning, it uses the graphics card, the GPU. The CPU is the central processing unit. I think so. The GPU is the graphics processing unit. Now, someday I'm going to come back and talk about the GPU in a totally different context related to like machine learning. That's not what I'm talking about right now. The GPU is your graphics card that's been heavily engineered and optimized to deal with grids of numbers, matrices of numbers, pixels, images. Any image is simply just a grid of pixels. And OpenGL graphics library is a standard to work with rendering images to your computer screen via the graphics card. So uh, you might have used uh, you might have used P3D mode in processing. That is using OpenGL. That's actually a Java environment, so it uses Joggle, which is like Java OpenGL. You might have worked with Open Frameworks, which uh, is a C++ a creative coding library, which you can write OpenGL calls directly in Open Frameworks um, in C++, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go down the road of all the different 3D environments and how they make use of OpenGL or not. WebGL is a standard for doing OpenGL in the browser. And there's, you can, you can write raw WebGL code. You can learn WebGL uh, and you can make 3D hardware accelerated graphics things happen in the browser. It's very exciting. Um, I am not going to teach you WebGL in the lower level WebGL on its own. Um, uh, what a lot of people do if they want to do 3D in the browser, well you can do WebGL directly or you could use a library that kind of sits on top of WebGL and wraps things in a friendlier way with a lot of features to like make all the WebGL stuff happen for you. Probably the most well-known library for doing that is a 3.js. Maybe I can pull up the 3.js website and show you some demos. 3.js is amazing. Uh, it has, it's been around for a long time. It's had many versions. It has tons of features. It is really robust. So if what you watching this video really care about is like, I want to make the most 3D stuff ever in the browser, <laughs> you probably want to investigate this library. P5, as you know, as you, maybe you know, maybe you don't, P5 is a beginner-friendly creative coding library for JavaScript, um, mostly focused around 2D drawing, but it also has a lot of other features. Like there's a DOM library for manipulating HTML elements on the page. You can get the webcam. You, there's a sound library for generating music or listening to the microphone. Um, one of the other somewhat newish capabilities of P5.js is a WebGL renderer. And kind of coming back from the history of processing, one of the ideas, the central ideas of processing in the beginning was the, what you, you could sort of flip a switch. You could write all this code, it renders in 2D, you flip a switch to 3D, and that same code works in 3D, and you can start to add more stuff. Whereas working with something like 3.js is really a whole different way of thinking about things, because 3D in the end kind of works in quite a different way. So P5.js, in the same way as processing, the sort of goal here is can you write a P5.js sketch 
and sort of just convert it into 3D and add some new functionality. And that's what I want to look at in this set of videos. So how do you enable WebGL in P5? It's actually very simple. Create canvas is the function <laughs> where you specify a width and a height for a graphics context that you intend to draw in. And by default, that graphics context is a 2D HTML5 canvas. If you give this create canvas function a third argument, WebGL, suddenly this context becomes a 3D context. And there are new functions that you can call. I, I should make a list of these things. Things that I want to go over are um, 3D geometry, camera stuff. What's the camera? Ooh. Uh, texture. Oh my goodness, textures. What else? A material. Lights. There are all these new, in, in some ways you're relinquishing a lot of that control. When you draw in 2D, you're, you really say like, this pixel, this exact pixel, set that exact pixel, this color. Working in 3D often becomes more of an exercise of setting up a scene and placing the camera and adding some lights. You're kind of relinquishing some of that pixel by pixel control by getting an engine that can create this illusion of 3D perspective for you. So this is what I want to, in this video series, I want to look at all of these pieces. This is the overall picture. So let me go back to the computer. Um, and I'm going to see, and I've got a chat going to see if there are any questions come up. But first I want to uh, give credit to where credit's due. So um, lots of people have contributed to P5.js. So the creator of P5.js is Lauren McCarthy. And um, many other people have contributed to P5.js. Um, the, uh, uh, the WebGL library was started by Kevin Seawoff, I believe. Um, Karen Pang did a lot of contribu con contributions to it as well. And most recently this summer, uh, two students, whoops, I went the wrong way, uh, Kate Hollenbeck and uh, Stalgia Grig both worked on overhauling the 3D rendering mode WebGL. Yeah, my shoe is untied, so why you're reading that text right there about the amazing work that Kate and Stalgia did, I'm tying my shoe. Um, so did a ton of work. And so I'm just going to quickly uh, um, click on these links. Read more from Kate here, Stalgia here. Um, this is uh, some documentation uh, and oops, and uh, about all the work that they did over the summer and the different features, what's still missing from WebGL. It is pretty new. I'm sure there are bugs, um, but I want to make sure I sort of credit this work. Um, and then the other thing I would mention here is this tutorial, Getting Started with WebGL and P5, which is a wiki page, is pretty much what I'm going to go through during this tutorial. I mean, they find some bugs. <laughs> I did a video on WebGL like probably a year ago, um, which was just kind of like looking at what works, what doesn't work. So, but the, but the work that Kate and Stalgia did over the summer was tremendous in getting so many features back up and running and working. So I'm excited to be able to look at that with you. Okay, let's do something really exciting just before this video ends. I'm going to go to my code and I'm going to say create, ca oh wait, oops, create canvas 400, 300. And I'm going to say background 51. And I'm going to say a rectangle 0, 0, uh, 50, uh, 50. And then <laughs> I'm going to say fill 255, 0, 150. And now <laughs> I'm going to go look at this sketch in the browser. Ooh, oh, first, ah, I want to do, let me, let me, let me remove the reference to the sound library so I'm not using it. Okay, there's the sketch. Okay. All right, now, now, everybody, stay with me, stay with me. I am going to add to my code, I'm going to make this sketch 3D, okay? Now, take a deep breath. It's all going to be 3D now. It's going to blow your mind. I'm making this 3D now. Here we go. I'm going to hit refresh. Yeah, 3D. So one thing that's really important to mention, I'm being ridiculous here, is that, so what I'm trying to point out to you here is that the rendering context has changed and suddenly the functionality of P5 has changed as well. Why do I not see the fill color here? Well, if I haven't thought about some 
questions around things like materials and lights, maybe I can't actually see that color without light being present to sort of illuminate the color. Um, why is this at zero, zero suddenly in the center? Well, P5 WebGL mode considers the origin point in the center of the canvas, not in the top left. So as I go through this tutorial and we look at all these basic pieces, and I go through geometry, camera, texture, material, lights, we're going to see how things work in 2D versus 3D, what works to mix between those two modes, what kind of remains exclusive to 2D or 3D. OK, wonderful. Uh, see you in the next video. Maybe, maybe. It's OK. Uh, maybe. We'll see. OK, goodbye.